on Get Up. And the game of the night last night was a double overtime thriller with the Nets and the Cavaliers. And Kyrie Irving back after missing seven games. And, of course, he won a ring in Cleveland once upon a time. Nets trailed much of the night, but then six minutes left, they're coming back. That's James Harden. He finished with a 21-point triple-double. They're back in it. Under three to go. They're down by five. Not anymore. Kevin Durant weaving. Yes, he finished with 38. It's a one-possession game. Just over a minute left. Joe Harris down by two. No good. But Kyrie is there for the putback. We're tied at 113. And we go to overtime. First possession of the OT for Brooklyn. Kyrie off the screen. He would score 37 in 48 minutes in his return. Under a minute left in the OT. Cleveland down three. But Larry Nance Jr. is clutch. Tied at 120. Next, Brooklyn possession. Harden driving, kicking. Jeff Green is up and good. Nets a three-point lead. Five seconds to go. Brooklyn up by three. Colin Sexton, three, two, one. Oh, he ties it. Knocks it in with 1.6 remaining. We go to a second overtime. But first, Kevin Durant had this chance to win it at the buzzer in the first OT. Wouldn't get it. Played 50 minutes last night. Second OT belonged to the Cavs. Little over two minutes to go. Cleveland up five. Sexton, yes, finished with a game-high 42 points. And the Cavaliers, in double overtime, win it by a dozen. Kyrie, let's talk. You know, we, we're, we'll have good nights, we'll have great nights, but it's how we galvanize this group um, together and how we sacrifice and compromise for the greater good. Great glimpses. Um, you know, we started off the game very, very, very good. Um, just the entire game, we just got to find a way to get stops when we need to. It felt perfect. It felt like we belong together. This journey together is going to be fun. You know, it was a tough first start, and especially it was an up and down game for us. But, you know, I, I like I like where we are. A fascinating night. And here's the big fella, always fascinating with Kendrick Perkins. Big Perk, so much to unpack. What's your number one takeaway from last night? Well, the number one takeaway is this, Greeny. Look, I know I was talking about who was going to be the Batman, who was going to be the Robin, and who was going to be Alpha, right? Kyrie came back and said, I'm Batman. He took almost 30 shots last night. He is not sacrificing no part of his game offensively, and we witnessed that last night. And that's going to be a problem, Greeny. All these guys are going to have to sacrifice their game offensively, but Kyrie don't have that, don't have that in mind doing that no time soon. I tell you that much. Well, so, so he took 28 shots last night. Kevin Durant took 25, and James Harden took 14. Again, in a game that went to double overtime. What's the right formula? If, if we're all going to be sitting here paying attention to how many shots they each take on a given night, what is the right formula, in your opinion, for them to be at their best? Well, Greeny, if you look at all the big threes that were formed and had success, each one of those guys sacrificed. And I, and I strongly believe, look, they got 10 points out of the bench last night. You have a guy that in Joe Harris that you paid $72 million to because he's able to shoot the lights out. They're going to need Joe Harris in the playoffs. And right now, the way that the Nets are playing ball is just a three-man team on the offensive end. They got to spread the wealth. They got to give these guys confidence. If I'm Steve Nash, I got to go in this locker room and address the word sacrifice. I got to address it, Greeny. And look, I would play Kyrie as a six-man role type uh, deal. Not saying I wouldn't start him, but I would bring him in with that second unit and just let him rock out because he has no plans on passing the ball, so you have to let him do what he do when, Ky when KD and James Harden is not on the floor. You, you make an interesting point. The game was played. It took 58 minutes on the floor last night, and the Nets got 10 points off their bench. Cleveland got 44 off of their bench, so that's the difference. And then the other side of this is Cleveland comes into the game, a big fella, with the worst offense in the NBA, and, and they gave up, the Nets gave up 147 points to them. How much of a concern is defense for this group? It, it's very concerning. Right now, the Brooklyn Nets couldn't guard senior citizens at recess right now. And that's a problem in a nursing home. And because, look, when you look at what they're doing right now, they gave up 50% shooting to the Cavs uh, uh, from the field, 50% from the three. That's not going to cut it. And look, I had major concerns when they traded Jared Allen. I said, man, they going to really miss him. And they are. Last night, Steve Nash had, and that didn't work out well. So with that being said, they happened to march to one 
add depth, go out and get some players because DeAndre Jordan is not the same DeAndre Jordan that we saw with the Clippers. And Steve Nash and his coaching staff are going to have to reconstruct and, and, and do something different scheme-wise because that drop coverage for a center is just not going to get it. Well, I'll say this. If what they need is an enforcer, then maybe we have the answer. Once again, all week long, we have been enjoying the video that Kendrick Perkins posted on his Instagram of his son when he was seven. He's now nine. Just, I guess for lack of a better word, dominating in AAU basketball. That is Big Perk's son. And, and we, we have enjoyed watching this uh, and enjoyed your pride in it as you take a look at that walk. Uh, we did not get Shefty and Lewis's thoughts on this earlier this morning. Lewis, give me a scouting report here because we could be looking at a three <laughs> technique someday. Look, man, my, my man's got some size now. Perk, he's nine years old now? Wow. Yeah, he's nine now. Nine years old, huh? Yeah, I, I got, I've got a nine-year-old boy who's going to be 10 at the end of this month who plays some ball, too. And he, he went up against a guy who looked like that in his last championship last year. I hope he's out here in the living room watching the game, watching this right now, if, if he's not in school upstairs in the bedroom. Because I'm going to ask him, I'm going to be like, what could you have done with Kem Kendrick? Because he looks like a beast. I should, I should bring him in here right now so he can watch this. I don't know if he's watching this. But I need, I need to light a fire under him. This may be the perfect video for him. Chef this may be the thought. perfect one. <laughs> he's got that strut going. He's got that swagger going. He's already taller and bigger than me. Very. I was over my dad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> short shrifted, man. This Damn. is more. This is more recent. Perk, Video I again. Love it, and look at Big Perk coaching. Look at him coaching. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, thank you, Big Perk, for sharing your family with us. We have enjoyed it this week, and thank you for for all of the fun. Good for you. Tough first start, and especially it was an up and down game for us. But you know, I, I like I like where we are. The big fella is up early with us here this morning. It's Kendrick <laughs> Perkins, and Big Perk. This was a game we were so looking forward to, and it obviously, in a lot of ways, lived up to the hype with double overtime and all the big numbers. What was your number one takeaway from last night? Well, Greeny, the, the number one takeaway was that Kyrie missed time and he came back and took almost 30 shots. Look, the word sacrifice should never come out of his mouth, Greeny. You remember the last time I was on the show and I said that KD was going to be Batman, James Harden was going to be Robin, and Kyrie was going to be Alfred the Butler? You might as well throw that out the window because Kyrie Irving is not taking a backseat to no one, and he showed us that last night. So I, I just wrote this down for you here. KD took 25 shots in the game last night. Kyrie took 28. James Harden took only 14. How does that formula sound to you going forward? It don't sound good. And here's the thing. Steve Nash has to do a better job of staggering their minutes. He has to play Kyrie Irving in a six-man role. That doesn't mean he doesn't start him, but when you look at what the bench gave them yesterday, it was only 10 points. Bring Kyrie back in with that second unit and let him rock out because he's not passing the ball. On top of that, you're going to need a guy like Joe Harris to come up big for you in the playoffs. And last night, he, his shots wasn't there. They wasn't get, find, finding him to get good looks. And they're going to need him. So Steve Nash is going to have to address this team like, like a mannequin and let them know that sacrifice, team ball, all three of these guys need to be taking the under 20-shot uh, attempts a game in order for this to be a success, in my opinion. And we will all pay all the attention in the world, and understandably, to that side of the floor. But at the end of the day, the Cavaliers came into this game as the worst offense in the NBA. And the Nets allowed them 147 points, granted, in two overtimes. Can they stop anybody? Is their defense as much of a concern as I think it is? Hell yeah, it is, Green. Look, right now the Nets can't stop you. Dan Orlowski, Big Damian Woody, Big Marcus Spears, and Ryan Clark at LA Fitness. They cannot <laughs> guard anybody. And look, I said this when they traded Jared Allen that, that was a, they were going to miss him, and they did. When you watched them last night, they moved Kevin Durant to the five, and that wasn't a good look. The Cleveland Cavaliers shot 50% from the field, 50% from three, and that's just not go get it. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if they need to, you know, go over schemes or defensive schemes or whatever they need to do, but they got to figure it out right now on the defensive side. 
Okay, and, and so all of that is great, and we will have plenty more time to break down the hoops. But there was one other thing I wanted to bring up with you, Kendrick, and in order to do this, I want to bring <laughs> our friends Damian Woody and Dominique Foxworth in early this morning. We have had a great deal of fun so far this week, Kendrick, watching the video you posted of your son playing basketball over the weekend. The swag is remarkable. Uh, Big Perk, take us through this a little bit here. Look at that. Well, well, you know, Greeny, look, I'm, I'm raising little beasts over here. So, look, and he was seven years old at the time. He's nine now. But, you know, look, we don't have friends when we step on the court. But I don't care what age you is. You got to dominate. And you see the walk, Greeny? That's called swag. That's called bringing that intensity. Can, can I just confirm once again that the, the video we're watching here is your son was seven years old? Yeah, he was uh, he was seven at the time, Green. He was seven at the time. You know the oh, expression, man. Nick. You know he was big when he was little. I mean, I, I've never seen a better demonstration of that in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, I think because he's Park's son, you want to call him Little Park because Park is Big Park. But I feel like it's just too big.